Welcome to the Mile High Podcast. This is your host, Dr. Daniel Knowles. Thank you for joining us from wherever you are joining us and tuning in. And we look forward to you joining us at Mile High Altitude in June at Mile High 10. It's our 10th anniversary. And today we um, are really excited to have a highlight for our guest on this podcast. And by the way, if you're not a subscriber, make sure you hit subscribe. So whether you're listening to this on iTunes or Stitcher or um, are on YouTube or whatever way, you never miss any Mile High Tick. We're really grateful to have um, today from Adam Physics, Pam Arroway and Adam Everett. And they are an incredible resource relative to x-ray, radiology, physics, for especially chiropractors, whether you are in the Colorado and Front Range area or around the world. So we're going to help people uh, have better information for talking to their patients and equipping their clinic, equipping their clinic um, relative to radiology. Thank you so much for joining us today, uh, Pam and Adam. Thank you for having us. Yeah. Hello. We're grateful to have you here. So first of all, uh, tell us a little bit of how you found your way into the world of, well, yes, radiology and physics, but also chiropractic related to that. <laughs> well, it, you know, it's a, it's a long story. I've been doing it for a long time. Uh, when I, I was originally an x-ray tech uh, that trained in Denver, and um, went back to school and got my master's degree in, in radiological physics and got into radiation therapy. The first job I had in Longmont, Colorado uh, was a job where um, I had to inspect x-ray machines as part of my job. So those of you who don't know Colorado, uh, the regulations, um, every x-ray machine in the state of Colorado is required to have uh, an inspection. And for mm -hmm. chiropractors, it's every year. Um, because of that certification I had to get for that hospital job, I went on a list, a list that gets sent out every year when, when people are due for inspections. So about 15 to 20 years ago, I started getting calls from chiropractors about getting their x-ray machines inspected. And so that just snowballed over the years. The people I inspected had me back the next year. That went from five to 10 people I knew now to well over a hundred chiropractors we serve in the Denver metro area. Um, it was the thing that started our company. And now we do everything. Uh, the, we buy and sell equipment, we do radiation safety, shielding designs, we do the inspections, of course, and everything that's possibly associated with x-ray. But it all started with uh, being on that list that the chiropractors call when the state tells them you get your inspection. Uh-huh. Well, look at that. And, and what about you, Pam? Well, so I met Adam, um, and I was in a job I wasn't super happy with in a completely different field. Um, and, and we decided that, that I would start um, managing the business behind the scenes because it was kind of growing too much for him to do on the side. And so I started to do that and we decided that we wanted to start doing repair and sales and installation. And it's, um, it's really hard to hire somebody to do x-ray service. And so uh, I decided to start doing it myself. So I went to some training and I started repairing x-ray machines myself. Um, and since then, we've hired more uh, field service engineers, and I've trained them. Um, we've sent them to some training, and so it was a complete career switch for me. I'm I'm trained in statistics, um, but we've been doing this now for several years, and and as Adam said, we've grown to have a really uh, big contingent of chiropractors that we service in the Denver metro area. Yeah, I know, and and one of the things that we we're so happy to have you as part of Mile High this year is you are known as the go-to in the Mile High State for um, radiology services relative to um, doing planning for your space, your floor plans, um, and, 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 and radiation safety and state compliance and all of those things. And so we want people, this is often a concern for staff, it's a concern for doctors, especially ones that have never had an x-ray unit in their office, maybe they're starting out or they're expanding. 
Um, so it's good to know who to reach out to and know of you guys uh, as an information resource for that. And on your website, you have a resources page, which we'll put in the, in the, in the liner notes so people have that. So first of all, let people know a little bit about what Atom Physics does. What are some of the things that you do that are important to chiropractors around the world as well as locally in Colorado here? Well, we like to be your x-ray equipment service company from soup to nuts. So if you are building out a new practice or moving your practice, we can help you with the shielding design uh, that the state requires you to have, which uh, evaluates where you need x-ray shielding in the room. Uh, mm -hmm. We also sell the materials that are needed to do that. So we have rolls of lead and leaded windows, those kind of things. Uh, we can also do your room sketch for you, sell you equipment, um, service the equipment, inspect the equipment, repair equipment, uh, deinstall, dispose of equipment, all of that. So all of the things that you need around your x-ray equipment. Uh, we can also talk to you about state compliance um, in Colorado, as well as in other states. We do uh, some service in other states as well. And so we're really trying to be your one-stop x-ray resource for your x-ray equipment. Excellent. Excellent. And understand that this is a need for every chiropractor, um, both, you know, in running their individual office and also their, you know, having to be able to have appropriate communication with patients. And a lot of people don't know a lot relative to uh, setting that up, especially when they open up an office originally or when they expand or they said they want to go into getting an x-ray machine. Um, I didn't know about that. I know when I did, it was a whole new world that I did not learn about. And so we, we use x-ray in our office for years. So um, 10 or 15 years, but when I went into that first, it was, I was so helpful. It was so grateful for the help. So then um, what is a medical physicist? So I'm a medical physicist. It's, um, I'm certified by the American Board of Radiology, um, which is the board that also certifies radiologists and radiation oncologists. It's, um, my degree is in radiological physics, which is a mouthful, but basically my life is medical radiation. So I, um, if I'm in a hospital setting, I'm overseeing basically all the radiation in the hospital from the diagnostic imaging department and x-ray, nuclear medicine, radiation therapy. Um, I am at that level that, that I'm the expert on the one that's in charge of it. Uh, so it's a lot of, you know, radiation is tough because you can't see it, you can't feel it, you can't touch it, you can't taste it, you don't know where it is. And so my training is in not only how to detect radiation and measure it, but then how does it interact with the body? Uh, so radiobiology is a big part of what I do. Uh, I have a real keen interest in, in educating the public, answering questions, writing articles uh, about radiation and how it interacts and what do we worry about, what do we not worry about? And so medical physicist is, is somebody that is involved with all sorts of medical radiation. Excellent. Excellent. Got it. Now, now I got to ask you this because this is the question that gets asked all the time. My staff struggles with this all the time is, well, I don't want to have x-rays. I don't want to take films. Um, I'm concerned about radiation. Um, can you help people have, so, so their staff and so doctors can properly answer those questions like, well, I don't know if I want to take x-rays today at the chiropractor's office. Um, how much radiation is a concern? Well, this, the federal government has set some regulatory limits on what radiation workers are allowed to receive per year. And that's a number of 5,000, 5,000 millirem is what we call it. That's one tenth of the 50,000 millirem that we know causes problems. So what the government did is said, okay, here, here's this limit where we know bad things happen. We're gonna take a tenth of that. We're gonna call that the limit just to keep everyone safe. And so for your staff, that's why you wear the, the badges and things like that to measure what that is over time. Now I'll tell you, in all my years of working in the industry, there's only two types of people that ever even come close to approaching those limits. And those are uh, 
cardiac cath doctors or interventional radiologists, basically people who work all day long in an x-ray suite, putting stents inside a patient where they have the x-ray coming up through the patient's body and they're being exposed to it. So as far as workers go, somebody stepping behind the lead wall to take a couple of x-rays a day, it's minuscule amounts of radiation. Okay. And one of the things we do when we set up the room is we, I do the calculations to show how much lead we put in the walls, where you need to stand, so that as you operate this machine day in and day out, you're safe. Mm -hmm. One analogy or, or maybe a, an example I like to give to people that you may not know is we get a lot more radiation living in Colorado at mile oh. high than people that live at sea level. Okay. Fact, we as a population, you and me and everyone else here in the Denver area get four chest x-rays worth of radiation more than people that live in San Diego or Chicago. Just living here. Just living here. Wow, that's interesting. And you also get about a chest x-ray, and that's being a patient. That, that's not taking the x-ray. That's the person being x-ray. So you would, if you went to the doctor's office and got four chest x-rays, that's the same amount of extra radiation you get living in Colorado. And that's due to the filtration of x-rays through the atmosphere. So uh, airline pilots and steward, oh, I can't say that, airline pilots and flight attendants, flight attendants have a very high radiation uh, exposure job. People don't realize that because they fly up at miles above in the atmosphere. And just like us living in Denver, they have less of that atmosphere filtering out radiation. In fact, uh, passengers on a flight to, I'll well, say from here to London and back, get about a chest x-rays worth of radiation during that time. Oh, wow. Wow. And it doesn't say on the plane as you're entering it, if you're pregnant or could become pregnant, please inform uh, the pilot, right? It's, we, we take that for granted that we're okay with that exposure. Mm -hmm. And yet we have all this concern and worry about a single x-ray that could be really medically beneficial to us as patients. Right. So then how do we, how do we discuss that with patients? And what's, what if a person wants to, like say a typical chiropractic office might say, take an A to P and lateral cervical film and an A to P lateral lumbopelvic film. That's a kind of a common series. Many people take more than that, but that's a kind of average uh, thing, four or six films. Uh, they would also say AP and lateral thoracic, for example. Um, and a patient's concerned about that. Um, how much radiation is that? How concerning is that? Or is it they're more, you know, more, they should, they're getting more exposure other, other places? You know, it, so the, the stance of the national agencies and, and everybody is that any little bit of radiation exposure is potentially dangerous. And Got that's it. the way we approach things. So we wanna use as little radiation as possible to get the needs of what we need to be done. With that said, it's never been proven that uh, x-rays, regular x-rays, and that you just receive once or twice in a year, you know, the, the cervical, lumbar, thoracic x-rays have ever been shown to be dangerous to anybody. So um, that amount of dose, and so honestly, when, you, when you're thinking about radiation exposure in a medical setting, it's the staff you're trying to protect, not the patient. Ah. And so that's something you can explain to people that, listen, this exposure you're getting is, is done millions of times a day all over the world to, to mm -hmm. people. And there, there is no, never been a direct link to anything that goes bad with that. Now, if you were to go to the hospital every weekend for a year and get a CAT scan of your whole body, then you're starting to get area into areas of dose that we know could be bad for you. Right. But one or two or a handful of x-rays for us to evaluate your spine, it's just, it's so below the threshold of what we know is wrong or could be bad mm -hmm. that it, it's fine. There, there's really nothing, nothing to worry about. But I have these conversations a lot with people. <laughs> I have, I've written a lot of articles and my name is out on the internet with my phone number. And I get people from all over the country calling me. And it's, it's hard to talk people down that are scared about it. Right. No, no, it is. Yeah, absolutely. 
And and I know when you're a new team member in a chiropractic office, then maybe you just got certified, for example, in Colorado to be able to take films. So you don't have as much radiological knowledge. Uh, and then you're sitting there with a patient um, and the doctor wants to take films that, that, that the staff can have a hard time talking to a person down. What are some strategies or what kind of things would you advise staff to be able to, to navigate that? Well, the, the first thing is, is relating it to, to environmental dose and saying what I told you earlier. It's like, listen, did you, did you even realize living in Denver uh, or this, you know, the mile high city is you get, you're getting four chest x-rays worth of radiation a year just living here. Mm-hmm. And that doesn't seem to be some big public health concern. There's no difference in, in health. In fact, Colorado is the healthiest state in the union, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, so there's that. And then you can also relate it to what, again, used the, the strategy earlier that you also get that same kind of dose flying on a, a long plane flight to perhaps London and back, um, or back and forth to JFK or something a few times. Uh, people can also relate it to um, kind of daily dose. So uh, we get about one millirem of radiation a day just from background. Mm-hmm. Um, and so a chest X-ray is about 10 millirem worth of radiation. So it's also just about 10 days of just living on planet Earth. Oh. Is one chest X-ray. Now, if you're getting five or six, you know, lumbar, cervicals, those kind of X-rays, you would say more like, you know, this is about the exposure you're going to receive anyway, just being on planet Earth in the next two or three months. Mm. So, you know, from the day we're conceived to the day we die, our bodies are exposed to radiation, natural background radiation from the sun and from the earth. And our bodies are used to handling it. Mm -hmm. It's really intense, high exposure, you know, situations from nuclear bombs and fallout from nuclear disasters. That's where we know really are the problems. Right. Right. I think it's also the opportunity for, for your staff or for the doctor to make the case about the, the benefits of the x-ray and that, that there That's is a, a point. small, small risk, but what is the flip side of that? What is the benefit of the doctor having this information instead of having to, to guess about what's going on with your spine or if it's in a medical situation, you know, what's going on? And so this, there's this little bit of risk, but if the more you can talk about the benefits and the plus side of the doctor having that information to work from, um, I mean, that's really what the balance is. It's just, it's so worth it for the doctor to have that information. Right, right. And that's a really important point, which yeah. is the risk to benefit ratio, because people get concerned about it. And uh, the benefit is the doctor doing a better job uh, and being able to properly assess you as compared to not having the information that they need. And often people aren't, aren't thinking that. Um, so I appreciate you bringing that up, and it, that's a, a vital thing. Um, Pam, um, if you can share with me, what's, what are your experiences uh, as a woman running an x-ray equipment service company? Yeah, so it's, it's, um, it, there's not a lot of women that go out and fix x-ray machines or install x-ray machines. So I've, you know, I've had the experience where I've, I've showed up on site, and um, they, you know, the doctor or someone has said to me, yeah, when's, when's your guy going to get here? <laughs> I'm, guy. I'm here. This is it. Um, or, you know, I, I've had, and I've had um, people, <laughs> I had an electrician one time, I had the panel open to connect the x-ray machine in and he closed the panel. He said, oh, you don't want to, you don't want to touch that. That's dangerous. And uh-huh. I was like, I have to install the x-ray machine. I have to touch the, the disconnect box. So it, it's very unusual. And, um, you know, I think people are sometimes surprised when I show up and, you know, as, as the company's grown, I do less of that um, on site, but it's definitely kind of, um, it's, it's kind of fun when they realize that I, I'm here to fix the machine. I'm the one who's going to be opening this machine up and, you know, testing and, you know, trying to, trying to diagnose it. So it's been a, an unusual experience and especially coming from my training in statistics, which was it's a completely different field. Um, it's right. just a really different, different feel for it. Right, right. And right. I would say, you know, our company is really focused on uh, diversity. And we take a lot of pride that we have, you know, as many female employees as male employees. And, um, you know, that's something that's really important to us. We're very 
you know, forward thinking people. And we don't like getting caught up in, in kind of the stereotypes of what equipment companies are and what they do. And, and so, you know, thank you for asking that because it's something that's it's really important to us as a company. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, and it's important in, overall uh, in the world. What, now you're talking about on-site visits. Let's help people understand more because you provide services for people on site in Colorado and people off site that have needs um, that are not in Colorado because people listen to this podcast from all around the world, uh, maybe in design shielding or moving their office or setting up a new office. Can you share a little bit about what you do? Uh, let's start with on site since you were just talking about, you know, doing, doing yourself doing work on site and looking at machines. Can you tell a little bit about first what you do on site? Yeah, so definitely if you have an x-ray machine, if you're if you're having trouble with it, um, we can do repairs. Now, the cost for us to travel outside of Colorado to do a repair is, is typically prohibitive for, for a doctor. But if you're buying new equipment, let's say, um, you're, you're going to pay somebody to come in and install that anyway. And so we will do, we, we do a lot of installations outside of Colorado. Um, Somewhere we've sold the equipment and some not. We have other companies that hire us to do the install because there are a lot of x-ray companies that just do the sales and then they're done. And so we come in and do the install. We might hold a warranty on the equipment and offer service after the fact. Um, certainly if we do an install and we hold the warranty, then even if you're, you're out of state, then we, you know, we're responsible and we take responsibility for, for making sure you're up and running. Um, the other thing that we do a lot for um, places outside of Colorado um, and we do this also for our Colorado customers, is we do remote support. So oh. if, your, if your issue is with your software, let's say for your DR system, um, then we can remotely log in and do a lot of troubleshooting and sometimes solve the problem remotely without having to come on site. And that results in, um, you know, it's quicker for the doctor because we can usually get to you quicker. Um, it's less expensive for the doctor. And then, you know, if we're not able to solve it remotely, we can still send somebody out. But like I said, oftentimes we can remotely troubleshoot and, and provide that that way. Oh, that's that's huge. Uh, what are some of the, the, the other services you perform in terms of shielding and office design? Right. Yeah. So one of the things we've really grown into um, is shielding design. So most every state in the country requires some sort of shielding design to be done prior to installation of the x-ray machine. And what that is, is the calculations based on where the machine is in the room, what's on the other side of the walls, how, what's the distance between where the x-ray machine is and the patient standing and, and those kinds of things. And I do those calculations and come up with a report that says, okay, this wall over here uh, needs two pound lead or one thirty second inch lead in it. And this one, you're fine. This, this goes, this is an exterior wall that goes out to a parking lot. We don't need shielding there, that kind of thing. Uh, almost every state in the union uh, requires that be done by an expert. Uh, and I am registered in nearly all the states in the country. Uh, last two years, each year, I've done over 100 shielding designs. Wow. That's the country. So I spent a lot of time with that. And a majority of it is, is chiropractors, um, small medical offices, veterinarians, the chiros are a big part of that. So uh, I have that down pat. I work hard <laughs> with, uh, with, uh, with the companies and, and the doctors I'm working with to, to minimize the costs. I'm not gonna just slap on and say, hey, you need all of this shielding up there. We really you know, go over things and make sure it's appropriate for, so for so then it sounds like chiropractors are a big part of what both of you work with and Adam Physics work with overall. Oh yeah, by far it's our, it's our biggest um, section or, or section of clients that we have, our chiropractors. We, we specialize in chiros. Now you mentioned the resources, online resources, it's adamphysics.com uh, forward slash resources and if you're driving, don't cause any subluxations. Don't try to write it down. We'll have it in the notes with the, with the email and the blog with this. But what are some of the resources people can find online to, uh, for you guys, uh, with you all for a resource for them? Well, we do have, um, especially since we're in Colorado, we do have some of the documents and forms for Colorado. So, for example, if you have an x-ray machine, you have to have your facility registered with the state of Colorado. 
That's an online form. Um, if you are having an, an inspection done, whether it's by us or another company in Colorado, um, there's a list of kind of what to, what to do ahead of time. What should you have ready for us? Um, and we also then have, we have a blog with some information um, where we, we do things like, uh, sometimes Adam will write a commentary on a recent article about uh, x-ray in the news, um, chest x-rays for COVID, for example, or something that's sort of timely. Um, we also talk about, you know, some technical issues, like sometimes we'll get a question from, from Kairos in particular, um, whether they should be shooting their cervical films at 72 inches instead of 40 inches, right? right? What's the advantage? What's the disadvantage? We have lots of docs that don't do it um, and they seem to be doing all right. Um, so, you know, why would you do it? So information like that as well. So sometimes we'll take, you know, questions that we get frequently and we'll turn those into a blog post as well. Um, so yeah, we have a mix of, of Colorado state regulation stuff, some informational resources, and sometimes just, you know, some interesting things related to x-ray that, um, that we'll put on there as well. Okay. Wow, that's, that's great. Now, if someone's considering an x-ray system, they've never had one, um, they've wanted, and now they're, you know, jumping into that pool uh, and making that investment. What are some important things to consider? Well, I mean, one thing to consider is the, the physical space that you have available for an x-ray room. Um, and, and one of the things that Adam does as part of the shielding design is often has a conversation with the doctor about the possible locations. They may say, well, I really want in this room, but I've also got this room available. What do you think? And we can talk to them about the advantages or disadvantages of using different rooms or shooting in a different direction within the room. Mm -hmm. um, we, and we can also then talk to them about um, what they're going to need to do for, for state compliance. Um, and, and then questions like this, do you want to be able to shoot cervicals at 72 inches? Or are you going to do everything at a fixed 40 inch distance? Um, what do you want to be able to do with the images after the fact? Do you want to be able to annotate the images? Are you a chiropractor that uses special measurement techniques like NUCA doctors or Gonstead doctors? Um, because depending on that, you might want different software to process your images and be able to do those markups. Do you send your images out to a DAC bar for overreads, or do you want that ability to do that? Is that something you do all the time? So all of those things for us would fit into, you know, having a conversation with the doctor to really be able to recommend for them, not only which, which room and how it's going to be shielded, but in particular, what kind of equipment, what kind of um, detector system and software they're going to need. And then we also talk about additional things like those dosimetry badges to measure radiation, um, whether they need any other x-ray accessories, stools or aprons or you know, things of that nature, filters for their collimator, things like that. Oh, yeah, wow. that's great. When Pam mentioned earlier about sending out your, your x-rays for overreads, you know, it's one of the advantages of digital is we can set you up. Uh, we are very uh, involved with uh, Terry Yoakum. Yeah. Um, Terry and Alicia Yoakum. And they, they, they are here in Colorado right. and we have uh, worked with very closely with them over the years. In fact, uh, Pam is uh, their go-to service engineer when they're having trouble. Oh, okay. And we can um, set up your your system to send directly to them for their opinions and, and overreads on, on the x-rays. Oh, great, 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 excellent. Um, that's so, that's all so important. Um, let me ask you this, um, what can we do? Uh, Cause people, if people already asking the assistant in the office or the doctor, whoever's taking the images about concerns about, oh, I don't know if I wanna take x-rays and they're, they may be unfounded concerns uh, or they're being a little cautious for them. So what are some things that the chiropractor can do to reduce uh, radiation dose and also communicate about that to the practice member, you know, practice member that th these are the steps that we're taking or what are the, or the one things that we've done already in our office to keep that to a minimum? Well, the, one of the biggest things is having the dosimetry badges that you wear. And, you know, if you have a staff member that's concerned about taking x-rays, uh, concerned about what dose they're going to receive, um, that is your number one backup, is having a dosimetry badge that measures all the dose that that person is getting through, throughout their day of work and everything like that. Now, we offer um, this uh, 
called InstaDose badges, and it's kind of a step into the 21st century if people don't have them from the old film badges. And it's a little device uh, that where you wear it just like a badge, but there's an app on your phone. And uh, at any time, you can open up the app, press the button on the back of the badge, and it reads all the dose that has been received by the badge since the last reading. That goes into a database that, that I oversee. And so you have the ability to on demand kind of look, did I get dose? But also over time, you know, what did I, well, how much dose am I receiving as a staff member? So that's a huge precaution we can take, you know, and then I'm available to consult, you know, with, with people. The, the shielding and the setup of the room and the equipment is designed so that there should be zero dose to someone who works in a chiropractic mm -hmm. office. With you standing behind the wall and properly uh, running the x-ray machine, not, not, not kind of reaching out and stepping around and, and exposing yourself, but being where you should be, how it's designed to be used, it should be zero. And in fact, it should be less uh, in the room than it is out of the room because the room is shielded and you have background radiation that's hitting you when you're outside of the room. I think also in terms of the patient side as well is if you let a, uh, let patients know that um, that you have a digital system, so meaning oh. that your detector is digital. Um, the the advances with detector systems are constantly towards lower dose, lower dose, lower dose. But even just having a digital system, the digital is so much more forgiving than film that we see so many fewer retakes of films. Um, where uh, maybe the, the person taking the, the image didn't quite get the technique settings right. So we're going to have to retake that film on you, for example. Right. Um, then that's one of the ways that for a patient dose that we're, we're reducing the dose. The, the other thing is these digital systems also have exposure indices on them. And so your, whoever's taking the x-ray, whether it's the doctor themselves or whether it's another staff member, there's, you're constantly getting feedback on whether you're using the right amount of dose, too much dose, not enough dose. And so they, you, that can be used to tune in the techniques that you're using with your particular setup so that we're using as little dose as possible to get good images on the patients. Got it, got it. Now, now with that, what are the some steps that, that was all very helpful for what we can limit, you know, as you said, there should be no exposure to the staff that is working there. What are the things that we can do to reduce exposure to the patient and also communicate to the patient that we've taken steps to limit it or reduce well, it. Well, like Pam said, you know, if, if it's a digital system, you're already, you're one step ahead of the game and that, right. that you're using something that's going to reduce second exposures. You're reduce, you're using something that's going to basically use as little amount of x-ray as possible to create the image and a digital system that we put in the chiropractor's offices is just as dose advantageous as something that's in a high-end hospital setting. Ah, interesting. So it's the it's really the same types of detectors. And again, you know, you work with us and our expertise in programming your your uh, X-ray machine so that when you pull up AP lumbar, you know, on this size patient, you're getting the right amount of, of dose to that patient. So you can explain to the patient, listen, we've taken every every really possible precaution we can. We have a good digital system. We work with Atom Physics or have this machine regularly inspected by another, you know, state inspections. We're up to date with compliance for everything. Uh, there, there's no other way to get an x-ray that's going to be lower dose than what we're doing right here. That's, I, that, that's so in helpful. In addition to that too, is if, if you're not happy with your image quality, we'd love to, to talk to you about what you can do about that. So if you're getting poor image quality, that could be any number of things. It doesn't mean your x-ray machine is broken. It could be that you need to adjust your technique settings. It may be that your DR system needs to be calibrated. Um, but if you are finding that you're, you're not getting good enough images and so you're retaking or maybe you're guessing on your patients, um, you know, it's, it, that's kind of the double whammy is if you expose your patients to the dose and then you're still not getting an image you can use as a, as right. a doctor. Um, right. So, you know, we're happy to kind of talk through those possibilities with you and see what we can do to help you improve your image quality so that you're getting the most out of your system with, again, the least possible dose to the patient. Right. Yeah. And, and that's so interesting. 
um, with digital with digital films, um, can I mean, do people? I remember having analog system as many years ago that I switched over to digital, and we had to do retakes very frequently. Do people frequently have retakes in digital systems? It's it's really lowered um, down. Uh -huh. uh, it's it's there's still repeats for missing anatomy and everything now and then. Um, and, and there's always the challenge of the very large patient and um, just you max out your system, the patient's own body is scattering the dose and there's different ways and techniques you can do it uh, to, to try to, to fix those problems. Uh, but there, the repeat rate is, is nationwide a lot lower than it used to be with film, just because we call it the latitude or the forgiveness of the DR system. Right. So not only does the software with those systems try to automatically adjust the image to optimize it for you, but there are so many tools that you can use to adjust the image after the fact. And so that's where we, we see that reduction in retakes is, it, you know, where, whereas on film, maybe that, that image would have been too grayed out. Now we've got digital and we can make some adjustments and still see the anatomy that you need to see. Mm -hmm. That that's so helpful. Now, you guys, just so I'm clear, you're you're completely in the service and physics area. You you don't actually sell equipment, correct? Oh no, we sell equipment. Oh, we, I didn't know that. X-ray units. Yep. Oh yeah, we, we sell X-ray machines. We sell digital upgrades. We 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 do everything and anything when it comes to an X-ray machine in a chiropractor's office. Oh, that's excellent. So people from around the world can actually. Go, have you as a go-to resource to purchase systems also. Oh yeah. That's true. And, and we're also, you know, we, we are, we pride ourselves on being an information resource. So if your question is, do I need a new x-ray system? Don't be afraid to contact us. We're happy to have that conversation. We have plenty of times have told doctors, you don't need a new x-ray system. You just needed it recalibrated, or uh -huh. you just need to use a little bit more mass to get good images or something like that. We, we really want to be a resource because we're, we're in it for the relationship, for the long-term customer relationship. Yes, and it's so frequent that people may have equipment that you're, you're exactly right. Calibration, settings wrong, uh, maybe it's not set up in an optimal way and they've just done things the same way because they didn't know what to do and they it's, it's a blind spot for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we work with uh, the, all the national vendors that are in the chiropractic schools. So I know 2020 uh, is one of the software packages that, that right. we train on in college. We sell, we have a long relationship with 2020. Uh, we've sold a lot of their panels, done a lot of the installations. And, and some of the other Rayants is also in, in some schools and and some of the other manufacturers. So we're very familiar with real chiropractic specific uh, equipment, software panels, and, and everything you need. That's, that's excellent. So again, how do people get in touch with you? Adamphysics.com is our website. There's a contact us form on there. You can certainly, you can give us a call. Um, if you give us a call, you'll likely reach one of us directly. Um, but yeah, we're also constantly monitoring email as well, if, if that works better for you. And, and then, you know, we really like to be able to, to talk to customers and really find out what's going to suit their needs, not just quote you for the, the cheapest thing we've got available for right now, but you know, what do you really need for your practice? Excellent. Excellent. And that's really easy to remember Adam physics. It's pretty easy. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's how we came up with the name years ago. My name's Adam. <laughs> and it's atom physics, but it's A T O M, like the right. atom we're all made right, of. Right, right, right. Um, <laughs> now, are there any big, big changes in the X-ray field that are important, particularly relative to chiropractors? You know, the the big change in in the last decade, of course, has been the change from film to digital, um, and that's we, we've helped a lot of people make that change, make that, that crossover. And people are just so ecstatic with the, the image quality and, and what they're getting beyond that. A lot of people have done that already, but if you haven't, that's one big change. You know, one of the other things, um, and I don't know if we have the time to get into it right now, but one of the really strange changes lately is that the recommendation now from the national organizations is not to use patient-specific patient shielding. Oh, really? So that's interesting. 
Uh, that if you and what that means is that's the lead aprons that would go around your waist or right. something like that, the patient's waist. And the reason for that is uh, it's 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 so hard to make that adjustment mentally. But yeah, that seems odd to me. That the X-ray machine itself, the tubes, um, the the actual hardware that makes the X-rays, has very very little leakage radiation. So in fact, that's overseen by the FDA. Uh, it is that's why those X-ray tubes are so heavy and mounted on those stands, as they're just you know surrounded with lead, and there's not any X-ray getting outside of the X-ray tube. So then you have the beam of X-ray that goes and hits the patient. The, the part of x-ray that gets through the patient to the detector is what makes the image. The rest of what bounces off your bones and why bones are white and not exposed black on the other side because the x-ray is hitting it, bouncing off, that's called patient scatter. And so that's where the dose to patients come from is the internal scatter that their own body is doing. Oh, that's so, so interesting. And if you think about it, if you wrap yourself in lead, how is that radiation then getting out? It's going to scatter down, hit the lead, and go back into you. So because of that, wearing lead actually slightly increases your dose to, to areas that you're not extra. Wow. The other reason is that it can also uh, lead to repeat x-rays. So if you have happen to put a piece of lead around a patient because they want it, or you're told to do that, you take the x-ray and you look, oh, the, the lead is covering what I needed to see. Let me go in and shimmy it down a little bit and retake the x-ray. Or if you use automatic exposure controls and that lead happens to be over the AEC and that makes the x-ray machine itself ramp up and dose because it's trying to get through that lead. So there's a couple of ways that actually using patient lead leads to overexposure or more exposure to the patient. And so the national boards have uh, physicists and doctors study this for years and have made the switch now to say that that is not what we should be doing. Wow, that's very interesting. I so have that a means blog about it. Not only the lead, but what about the individual, oh, you're going to put things on male and female specific areas? Right, same kind of, same thing. What you're covering up, you're actually helping to reflect back into. Wow. Uh, and, um, you know, either way, the dose isn't a lot for the patient. It's not much. And so um, what I recommend is if you have a, a, a really anxious patient that doesn't want to get the x-rays and for sure won't get them if you don't give them some lead, then, then go ahead and give them the lead. The anxiety, the risk versus benefit of getting the image is, is more important. But in general, you should, you should not use the lead anymore. And um, there is a blog. I have what I've kind of said you know, to, on this podcast right here. There's, there's a blog on our website that, that addresses this exact, exact issue with links to the articles that, that talk about this and why. That's so, so interesting. Well, um, do you have any like final recommendations relative to um, chiropractors, chiropractic offices, and radiology and x-ray, things that maybe you're asked all the time, they're, they're in your FAQ list, that you, you wish, things that you wish doctors knew. Well, I think talking to patients about that risk benefit of getting an x-ray um, versus the benefit of the doctor having that information to treat you better. Um, th that's one that we get all the time. And we, we do get contacted by patients as well as, as from doctors. Oh, really? Oh, interesting. Yeah. yeah. And so I think that's something that comes up a lot. And we really try to emphasize to patients is that getting one chiropractic series or a couple chiropractic series in a year, that is not a big risk at all. It's a very small risk. And so the, the medical benefit of that is, is definitely outweighs the risk. Oh, wow. And the other thing is, um, upgrading your system to a digital system from either a CR or film system doesn't necessarily or really most of the time require a change to the x-ray machine. Mm -hmm. So, so what, how you're, the machine you're using to generate the x-rays, the tube, the handles, the control panel, 
you don't need to buy a new one of those often because oh. it's, it's the same x-rays coming out. And we have run into a lot of hmm, maybe not real upfront x-ray salespeople <laughs> that will really That's that, so surprising. Yeah, it's hard to believe i know i know not, I, not in your business but just in ours sometimes <laughs> yeah no i i've seen it so yeah. and so you know one of the things when we first got into this when people were making you know really making that switch from film to digital is i talked to a lot of chiropractors who were told that they had to buy a whole new machine to be able to go digital and right. I, I really looked into that because I was like, I, I don't think that's true. Right. <laughs> and, you know, I did my own testing. I talked to manufacturers. I did everything. And it's just, it's not true. It was a, it was a sales technique that people used. And so that's right. something I would like everyone to know. Oh, yeah. I, rem I remember that because I had people that told me we had to get a new one and found other people that, you know, said, oh, no, you can just convert your existing one. So, yeah. yeah. So I'm, I'm very well aware of that. And I'm glad you bring that to people's attention because there's probably people that are still are maybe dragging their feet and converting to a digital unit. Actually, is that the case? Are there a lot of people that haven't done that conversion? Because I don't even know. I was at two offices today that were still using film. Oh, two wow. Yeah, I don't, you don't see it a lot anymore. You, <laughs> you don't. And it's, it's surprising to run into one, but I had two in a row <laughs> that I oh. went out to. I'll tell you, I, I was very happy switching to digital and getting rid of yep. the uh, film expense and the chemicals expense. Yep. Yeah. And the smell, right? And, the, and yeah. the, you know, just the hassle of it. People are usually when we switch them from film to DR, they're just amazed and they say, oh, I should have done this years ago. This is so much quicker right. and easier and better images for better patient care. Right. Right. There was an in-between step called CR there for a while. Yes where it's, it's, you're still putting a cassette in, you take the cassette out, you run it into a, a machine that reads it. Right, um, right. And I call that the eight track of uh, X-ray. <laughs> uh, it served to go from the film analog thing and it bridged the gap into CDs and, and uh, MP3 players, right? Yes, yes. Um, and, and people too, those systems are getting dated. They're not around much, nobody makes them anymore. And again, people are amazed with they if they upgrade their system from a CR to DR system, just the, right. the how quick it is, how much easier it is to use. Yep. You can look at the images before you get the patient out of position. You don't have to take five minutes to develop it. And so right. it's right. not all film anymore. Yep. Yep. And it, it makes it easier and more efficient for a clinic too. So mm -hmm. well, look, uh, of anything that I want people why we wanted to have you on the podcast, um, uh, not only because you, you know, we're, we're at Mile High and supporting it, but more so we, people need a resource for their x-ray questions and so many doctors and their team members, because so, sometimes the team members are doing more for it relative than the doctor and that owns the clinic. And so many, uh, you know, doctors and team members are lost and they need a, a, a go-to expert. So I, I want people to, to really, you know, mark in their address book, um, Adam Physics, as their go-to resource. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for having us on. Yeah, thank you very much. It was a real pleasure. Well, we appreciate having you on. And, um, you know, thank you for help, you know, being able to help more doctors change spines, lives, and minds with chiropractic. You know, not all chiropractors go the extra mile to have um, objective, objective outcomes of different types uh, in their offices. And the ones that do go to have, they want to raise the level of clinical excellence that they want to have an objective measure of some kind uh, and go in the direction of, of x-rays. Uh, it's good to have a support system for them. So thank you for doing that. Great. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining us on the Mile High podcast. Uh, make sure to hit subscribe, as we said, so you don't miss all, any Mile High ticket. Make sure to uh, to dial in being at Mile High in 2022. We look forward to seeing everyone there. Uh, MileHighChiroRegistration.com is where you can get the details. And we look forward to seeing you on higher ground.